Good morning and thanks for joining us on this Thursday, June 14th. I'm Lauren Varnas. And I'm Joe Morano. As you guys get set to move out the door on this Thursday morning, Elisa, of course, is over in the weather lab. We'll just go right to her and check in with your forecast first on this Thursday. Good morning, guys. Roads in Branson are just a wee bit wet. There was a thunderstorm that came through overnight about 3 o'clock in the morning when I got into uh, the Color 10 weather lab. It's 73 degrees in Branson right now. Dew points at 72, so it's pretty sticky. It looks like it's not raining in the Branson metro right now. That cluster of thunderstorms have moved to the south and east. We've got some locally heavy downpours and lots of lightning uh, from Yellville through Mountain Home and then down to uh, Mountain View. Nothing severe. Could have some gusty winds winds and some small hail. I got some reports of penny, uh, pea to penny size hail in some of these thunderstorms, but uh, again, just a quick downpour and then it's going to move on. It's 77 in Springfield right now, 68 in Rolla and 76 in Mountain Home. Very uh, kind of thick air mass. It's very humid out there this morning. We've got uh, dry conditions, or at least except if you're in northwest Arkansas this morning, and then a couple of storms possible this afternoon. We'll keep a mix of sun and clouds at the pool with a very isolated storm chance uh, later on this afternoon. As you're firing up the barbecue, it should be pretty quiet, just very warm and muggy with temperatures in the 80s. An update on the heat, we'll do that in 10 minutes. With some breaking news, a woman was taken to the hospital overnight after shots were fired at her. This was in the 800 block of South Douglas in Central Springfield. Her car was found at Kansas Expressway in Mount Vernon. Springfield police say a woman was in the South Douglas area when someone opened fire. We don't know right now if she was actually hit by a bullet or just possible debris. The woman fled and stopped in the area of Kansas and Mount Vernon, where she flagged, she was flagged down a passerby who then took her to the hospital. Officers say it doesn't appear her injuries are life threatening and there is no suspect or suspect description at this time. In some political coverage now, a new report comes out later today detailing the FBI's handling of its investigations during the 2016 campaign. It comes as President Trump's former attorney is under pressure to cooperate with the special counsel's own investigation. CBS's Laura Podesta has this story. The Justice Department's watchdog will release a 500-page report criticizing how senior FBI officials handled the investigation into Hillary Clinton's private email server. This was done by pros in the right way. The massive report is expected to label FBI Chief James Comey as insubordinate for his actions during the lead-up to the presidential election. That includes his decision to announce just days before the polls opened that the FBI had reopened its probe into Clinton's hand of the classified material. President Trump fired Comey in May of 2017. The report is expected to give Mr. Trump new reasons to criticize top law enforcement agencies as the special counsel's probe into Russian interference in the election continues. On the investigation front, sources tell CBS News President Trump's former personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, is under intense pressure from prosecutors who are investigating alleged fraud in his business dealings. The president's current personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, said on Fox News Cohen is not cooperating with the special Council. I uh, checked into this last night. It's not so. He's not. He's not uh, cooperating. Nor do we care because the president did nothing wrong. Last week, the president was asked about pardoning Cohen to keep him from cooperating. They haven't been convicted of anything. There's nothing to pardon. It's far too early to be. It is far too early to be thinking about it. The president added that he has the right to pardon himself, but would never do it because he hasn't done anything wrong. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. Michael Cohen is now looking for new attorneys, ones based in New York, to represent him. That's where FBI agents raided his office, home, and safety deposit box in April. There are no indications at this point that Cohen has discussed a plea deal with prosecutors. Some local news for you this morning. At some point over the last 20 years in the Branson area, you may have heard Janet Ellis greet you on the morning radio airwaves of KRZK. Ellis, though, was diagnosed with breast cancer last October, and a benefit was held for her last night at Dick Clark's American Bandstand Theater. Listeners and performers came together and shared the love and support of her, who said she was appreciative of it all. After beating cancer now, she's just grateful for all that she's, all the love she's received over the last few months. One of the main messages I've gotten is, we're with you, we're behind you, we love you, Janet. And I've also heard people say, because of you, 
I went to get my mammogram, or because of you, I got a checkup, or because of this thing that I was feeling that wasn't right, it, it made a difference in my health. The event was put together by her co-host, Josh Clark, who, and it raised almost $4,500 through donations and raffles. Moving on to some education coverage, 29 people have been appointed to a task force to help Springfield Public Schools make decisions on the district's facilities. Its main mission is this, which facility improvement projects need to be completed to ensure all SPS students have access to safe and quality learning environments. The group made up of parents, students, teachers, and community leaders will work with the SPS board to help shape the district's next bond issue. SPS leaders say they wanted a diverse community group of all of Springfield's geographic and demographic areas to come up with a solution to improve spaces where students learn. The task force will have several meetings starting tonight, and those will last until mid-October. You can find a full list of who's on the board, including Color 10's own Joy Robertson, Springfield's police chief, a local pastor, as well as several business, school, and political leaders. You can find all of that. Just head over to OzarksFirst.com and look for this story. In a Color 10 follow-up investigation, the funeral for the children lost in the Lebanon house fire is set for today. The mother of two of those children is still in critical condition. 20-year-old Ali Malik has been unconscious since last Wednesday's fire. It burned 15% of her body, primarily on her face, neck, and arms. We've learned there were no smoke detectors in the home at the time of the fire, and doctors say she's still suffering from panic attacks, most likely due to flashbacks from those events. The paramedics at the scene, they didn't even give her a 10% chance to survive. But the nurses that I've spoken to, they, they seem optimistic that she'll, she'll make it through this physically. Um, you know, emotionally, she's going to have a long way to go. She, you know, she doesn't know that um, her babies and her nephews and niece are gone. We have a link to a fundraiser for Allie's medical expenses on OzarksFirst.com.